What's up, YouTubers? Can't see myself. Oh my god, I wouldn't want to see myself. It's a little late, late night last night. Right now it's, it's going on about, yeah, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And this morning, I've been waiting for all week. I was also asked to, uh, to film this thing. Which is, hey, I don't have a problem. So I'm going to try and take you from the start to the finish of doing a brew. And this brew consists of a Hefeweizen. And I found this, uh, I found the recipe up on, I think it was Homebrew Talk. I'm looking at the paperwork right now. That's what I'm looking down at. And it's a regular Hefeweizen, but it has a twist to it in it. Um, you put in you put in zest of a lime on this one at five minutes left in the boil and then after primary fermentation is almost complete when all the the heavy fermentation is complete um, you go ahead and add the simply lemon lemon lime aid I've never I never tried it but there's quite a few people on there that said that it is absolutely outstanding so I'm going to do that today. So I'm going to move the camera around so I can let you see what the brew day is going to look like. So make, make, I hope you took your drama mean today. Ugh. You've got to excuse the mess. I renovated the upstairs a few years back. Now I'm doing the downstairs. So I got stuff everywhere, but I always have to fit in the fit in a brew day. You have to. Especially when you're saving money, not going to the, not going to the store. Anyway, um, I got to calculate my grain temperature. So I made this little spreadsheet. It's a pretty cool little thing. I can uh, calculate my grain temperature and then, or get my grain temperature and then calculate the strike water. So I'm going to be doing that first. So, and at the same time, I'm going to add just an extra bit of water, probably a half gallon to a gallon. Um, that I can add to the mash tun so that I can get that warmed up so I'll uh, get right back to you all right so before I do that this camera's kind of screwy hold on just a minute sorry I want to show um, what I have for grain so hold on I haven't taken them out yet this is a, this is rice holes this is what you use when you're using um, Specific ingredients that can clog your 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 ton, your the manifold in your ton, but that's just regular rice holes. I get I got about a quarter pound of that. Then on this one, let's see. Let me look this up here. I have my larger place, man. Table wise, I have. Um, seven pounds of pale two row US and then I got a pound of Vienna and that's the German Vienna. So here's the here's a pale two row. You already saw the rice holes. Or actually this is the seven pounds of two row. The other was uh, uh, it's Vienna. It's a pound of Vienna with uh, four pounds of wheat malt, German wheat, wheat malt. So I'm gonna have a total grain bill of 12 and a quarter pounds. So, and then we're going to have uh, the additions to the hops at the beginning of the boil. There's going to be a quarter of an ounce of Rakao pellet hops. And then at 20 minutes, there's going to be a quarter, another quarter ounce of Rakao and Sriracha Ace, same amount. And then at seven minutes, I'm going to add a quarter ounce of sriracha ace so um, I've never used those before no, I take that back the sriracha ace I helped uh, one of my buddies Dan help with his wheat beer and it turned out fabulous and I never tried the rack house so like I said there's gonna be lime zest put in five minutes left of the boil 
and then simply limeade after vigorous fermentation subsides in the fermenter. So let me get the grain and the mash tun and all that together and get strike water going. I'll see you in a minute. I also forgot to mention that I had did do a yeast starter. I actually started it on Wednesday. Today's Saturday. It's been cold crashing in the fridge. So there she is. We're gonna decant this baby into the brew. Let me tell you what it is. I forgot. I think it's a 380. It is. Um, White Labs Hefeweizen four. Ale WLP 380. Made a little mini beer on. Made a little mini beer on Wednesday, and got this baby going. And I had made a stir plate the week before, and it worked perfect. So we've been cold crashing for 24 hours now, maybe a little longer. But we're gonna we're gonna use this guy to, to make our hefe. So now, it's already getting in the way. I guess that's what you get for being so metal. Got to be careful because it starts raining again. I'm going to rust because I'm so metal. <laughs> All right, got the hair back. And I want to show you, see if we can do this without stuff up. I'll just, you have to excuse the mess. Here's the ton. I own the ton, if you look, it's got, it's got your spout. So, you've got your ball valve, the washers in there, rub a washer and other. And then here, what I did is I got creative. Everything's, everything's clean until I touched it. Um, The lid comes off, which is fabulous. Yes. So, in here, if you notice, there's a hole I put. We're gonna, I'm gonna try something this time that I hadn't done, and the hole goes through here as well. So, the reason why I have that is this guy. Um, last time, what I used to sparge was a colander. I think I, I'll think I'll, I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looked like, but um, I wasn't getting the the water going over the grain correctly so this will slip through there and you got your uh, your your end on here that uh, will rain over the grains so we'll try that and see how that works I don't know how good it's going to be and then in here I have my copper manifold everything's washed that's why everything's wet so I have my copper manifold let me show you how it's built uh, here. So we take a look. So you got uh, all your slits in here, so it acts as a screen when you're doing your mash out. So doing your uh, boil off. Anyway, this thing just sits right in there. I'll get you close up here. Got it where it kind of pins itself to the edge so it doesn't move. And then a good idea of my friend Dan was to, so you don't knock it around with a spoon, um, and knock it apart, to go ahead and crimp these ends here, 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 anywhere where if it tries to come apart this way, you know, see my hands. So if it, if it tries to come apart this way or this way, it can't but now it's pinned up here so I well, I should not have any issues with uh, when I do my dough in knocking this thing apart so that's that's the ton there'll be more about that later all right hopefully I got enough juice for this thing okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be uh, heating the strike water up so I, just to show what I use to measure it out first thing I do if you notice I don't know if you can tell on camera but the driveway is kind of tilted a little bit, so I shim that baby up on the edges there. Got a level out here, got it kind of close, no big deal. Anyway, on the spoon, I have graduation marks that I put on it. 
So that's a one gallon, two gallon, three gallon, four gallon, five gallon and up. So um, for the, we are going to use um, for our calculate strike water, volume temperature, the volume already for my mash is going to be four gallons and then the sparging is going to be four and a half. I'm just going to do the calculation, so hold on just a sec. Let's see if you can see this. Um, out of um, Brugger, logged in, I'm going to go to uh, recipes and then I'm going to do I'm always thinking here. Let's see. Here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to look at the brew sessions on this because I like to calculate what's going to happen before I even do it. So I'm um, going to edit, and in here is where I'm going to do my calculation. So I'm going to get the grain together. I go ahead and throw it right into the right into the mash tun. I don't worry about you know having the water in there. But what I'll do is I'll preheat it. I need to put the grains into something so I can take temperature. Hold on. Heck, I'll just take it on the big bags. So we're gonna do this. Are you getting sick yet? Alright. Flipped you around. Flipped you off, right? Bag, my boys start making their next album here shortly. Support your local music friends. All right, so I got my thermometer, Thermo thermometer, thermometer. Turn it on. Almost forgot how to turn it on. I had to look at the instructions. I'm gonna stick this in the green. And right now, so we're around 70, so I'm going to plug that in. Green town. So I'm going to need four gallons, actually, 3.99, four gallons. My grain is at 72 degrees. Not to be anal, I just like to get it close. Okay, my target mash temp on this guy is going to be 158 degrees. So I'm going to have four gallons at temperature, strike temperature of just over 170. So 170.4, I'll let you see that. Hold on. That's what we're looking at. Dun 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 dun. Be right back. All right. So here's what I'm doing now. Always be safe. Um, here's the approximately a gallon of water that's going to I'm going to heat up at probably to eh, 100 and, 175 maybe, and that's going to uh, heat my mash tin up so we're gonna let this go. Alright try this again hold on. Did I get it? Tuned. Okay, so we got him done. All right. Right now we are heating up the strike water. I have 
just under four gallons of water in here. It's gonna get this baby going. Get our dough in here next, so stay tuned. Y'all probably seen this. Later. All right, star sand. I, I go ahead and mark a bottle. It says star sand, so you don't get it mixed up with anything. You don't want to do that. And here is the sanitizer. So every time I do a brew, I make a new batch, and then everything I do sanitizing afterwards, even up to bottling and stuff, I still use that same same uh, star sand that I created because it lasts forever. So I'm going to, since it's a gallon, you do an ounce per uh, five gallons. So this one, you just go up to the quarter ounce. Let's measure it up. You see it? Probably seen it a million times, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna pour her in. And put Cat back on. Let's put him away. I don't need him for a while. Shake the baby up. Okay, I'm gonna fill the bottle up and I have my star sand. I always wanna have a spray bottle around as well as a container so you can keep your stuff clean. You drop something on the ground. You can spray it off real quick with the, with the spray bottle. All right, kids. Strike water's up to temperature. I need to dump this out quick. Nice and warm in there. Done on that. So, plug this. All right. Uh, better than a roller coaster, isn't it? Not. Okay. So I'm just gonna put this here just for a second. I have the strike water. It's over on the burner. First thing I'm gonna do. I like to do this first. I like to put the green in. Okay, the manifold looks good. good. It's not, it's not uh, political science, people. It's one bag. Get your staples in there. That's good. There's the oats. Look at that. Alright, and we have the rice pulse. That does nothing to the brew except. It assists in keeping the keeping the manifold from getting stuck. Okay, I'm gonna go get the straight water and we're gonna put her in. But daddy, I want to play patty cake, patty cake, patty cake, patty cake. So this is four gallons, 3.99. Pour that, oh, that luscious water, luscious, that water in there. All right, so I'm running around. I didn't have things set, it's too busy. Okay, so I have my thermometer, I'll check that in a minute. First thing I want to do is we want to get this dough in, get the dough balls out. What I do is I actually swirl this. Let's see better this way. Get along the manifold, to make sure you get very nice to it. Come on. 
one of these days this house will be done. Okay. Alright. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, so. Kind of, I swirl it up from the bottom. Just keep going around. There's some dough balls. Just get in the corners. Get around the manifold where I know there's a space, but be very gentle. Gentle will have you'll have a good night if you're gentle. Making beer is fun, yes. Alright, going. Alright, last mash I did in here. I only got about 67 or 68 percent efficiency. We've been great if I got 69, but can't have it all where would you put it right it usually ends up in my garage just keep going with it get in the middle portion now I can feel the manifold just be real careful can't stress that enough because if it comes apart guess who gets to clean their hand and stick it in this water you well, me in this instance. Okay, so the match is looking good. I'm gonna set that to the side, get my thermometer, and see where we stand. I need a thermometer, it works quicker. I hate losing all this uh, happiness and heat. So right now, it's calming down a little bit around around 154 that's fine so I'm gonna say it's 154 it was 153.6 which is okay okay so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give it one last stir we're only a few degrees off you're still within the range so your alpha amylase will do its work Oh. Say good night. Good night. Okay. So now I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna let this guy go. I need to cover the top there. Okay. This is like old. I used underneath the. Underneath my bamboo floors when I put them in, see underlayment. All right, see you in an hour. Start timer now. All right, so we got that, we got the mash going. So at this point, um, I've already cleaned. I cleaned all the equipment last night, so all I have to do is sanitize today. So what you want to do now, if you're using a gravity fed system, is you want to go ahead, get your tears ready to go so you have your hot liquor tank on top. Unfortunately, I use a bottling bucket and it worked great last time. I know it, I'm going to get some grief on this, but 170 degrees did pretty good on it, so it didn't screw with it at all. So the fly sparge, I think it took me about 45 minutes last time, so we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, getting the tier set up and getting things sanitized. So I'll go ahead and just throw the camera around and, and let you watch. Hooray! So, so there's mash time. I got a cooler I'm going to be, or a freezer. It's going to be turned into a keezer eventually. This is going to be where my hot liquor tank is going to be, which is the my happy little uh, bottling bucket. I have two of them. So when something goes up with the seals, we're okay. So we're going to have the hot liquor tank here, which is going to fly sparks into the mash. And then we're going to go right into the well pot. We're done. So at this point, since we still have sparking to do, we got to, one, watch the time. Two, get your sanitation done. And when you get about 20 minutes to the end of the mash, 
when you get about 20 minutes to the end of the match, you want to go ahead and uh, start getting your spark water ready. Ready, and this one calls for I think a little over four gallons on the sparge, four and a half to be exact. So you really want to be mindful if you can get that done beforehand. That's the way to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and sanitize now. So I'll just throw the camera around. So we're gonna. I just opened these up so I could smell them. I just put them in a baggie last night or the night before. So in here, the Sriracha Ace and the Raquel. Well, hello there, buddy. Haven't even started the beer yet, and you're already coming around. You're just looking for fun there, B. Okay, so let me go look at the Sriracha Man. It's gonna be a total free edition for him. Gajura. Rocco. Rock on, Dad. Alright, so in this one I'm just going to put a quarter. This will be the first edition. 60 minute. So I'm just going to put about a quarter of that in there. And then the Sorachi Ace, I'm going to put a quarter, approximately. I might add a bit more down the road, who knows? Okay, so that's going to be our bittering hop, so this is going to be 60. Get down in there. I was loosely... Are you guys seeing this? What are you doing, Brian? I don't know. So what I did is I put a quarter of Sriracha Ace, a quarter of Rakao. This is my 60 minute. So the, as soon as you get past the hot break, first hop edition, right at 60 minutes. So I'm gonna put them over here. Okay, and then the next one is going to be another quarter. And another quarter of each. So this, is going to be, wait, this is a 20 minute. You know what? It said only stuff. to uh, the quarter rack out at the beginning. Yeah, this will be the 20 minute, the 20 minute and the 7 minute. I'll just do, so I'm going to have a quarter ounce of each at 20 and 7. Then I'm, let's see. I'll just do the rack out. That, that'll be the. That'll be my bitter ring. Well, that's what you want to call it for Hefe, Hefe Bison, so. I'm just gonna. Put that in there. You know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna. Since it's a bittering hop, I like a little bit more bitter. We'll see. I mean, who knows? It might be, it might be rocking. You know? Okay. Sixty minute. Twenty minute. Seven minute. Okay. In order, going towards the boil pot. Nobody go nowhere. And our time right now, we're 40 minutes left. Take the rest of the sriracha. Sriracha. We had just been having so much rain. Haven't had to water my lawn once, and it's the middle of June. Usually we're watering in May. Usually. Okay. So yeah, we're at 39 minutes left on the mash right now. I'm gonna fill in some numbers here before I forget. Okay, so the grain temp was 72 degrees, 
for a minute. So, why did I do that? That's what threw me off. I had it backwards on my paper. So, make sure you double check your paperwork. And I don't need this, so I can go put it away. Alright, see you in a little bit, guys.